Morning, sis. Good morning, family. Good Hi, everybody. Morning. Good morning, beautiful family. Hi, sis. Hi. Your radiant, sis. Thank you for shining the light. Yes, thank you. It's not just the lipstick, right? No, no, no. Something a little bit beyond that, but the lipstick's nice too. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're on lesson 198 and uh, I'll be reading. Only my condemnation injures me. Injury is impossible. And yet illusion makes illusion. If you can condemn, you can be injured. For you have believed that you can injure and the right you have established for yourself can be now used against you till you lay it down as valueless, unwanted and unreal. Then does illusion cease to have effects and all it seemed to have will be undone then you are free for freedom is your gift and you can now receive the gift you gave well that's again very big that paragraph isn't it sis yes lots of things he's pointing to in there you want to start us off yeah yeah he says injury is impossible mm -hmm. i love that you paused on that yeah It's an absolute statement. That's it. Injury is impossible. We could awaken completely mm -hmm. right now if we totally believe that. That's right. So, and, and then he says, and yet illusion makes illusion. So illusion, mm -hmm. the illusion of separation has made the illusion of injury possible. That's right. Okay, so if so, you can condemn, mm -hmm. then you can be injured. You believe that you can injure, mm -hmm. and the right you've established for yourself can now be used against you mm -hmm. um, until you lay it down as valueless, unwanted, and unreal. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the belief that we can retaliate, that we can attack, um has has really uh made us how could you say it Did you say made has magnetized mm -hmm. the idea of injury mm -hmm. the idea that we could be threatened in any way shape or form that's right so once we drop once we drop that desire for condemnation the desire for defense, the desire for attack, the desire to take offense, to take things personally. To be a person. That, right? Mm -hmm. We're dropping that heavy boulder mm -hmm. of guilt. That's right. And so this, so all self-deception, it's a choice. Like injury is impossible. So everything that we suffer from is illusion, but it's a choice, a desire for self-deception. And we toy with these illusions based on this first thought of separation and they will seem to be real and they will work against us until, and I love these three words that he's pointing at. He says, Till you lay it, that wish for separation or the illusions that you're toying with, until you lay it down as valueless, this holds nothing that I want, mm -hmm. unwanted, right? This is not, this doesn't add, this isn't going to bring anything. I don't want mythical me and unreal. Lay it down as valueless, unwanted, 
and unreal. And Jesus again says, what you understand as nothing must disappear. So when we understand we're just playing with illusions and that they're unreal, that's when we lay it down. We're never going to lay it down while we still think it's real or it has some value, something that we want. Mm. Beautiful. So that, again, uh, eclipses the idea of good and bad. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the whole gap. Right, right. So it's, it's not that that it's bad it's that it's unreal that's it neither good nor bad it's either actually occurring in god or it's not at all yeah only that mythical me could suffer anything and that mythical me is the basis of the entire gap which we all understand by now is completely <laughs> illusion illusory okay here we go Condemn, and you are made a prisoner. Forgive, and you are freed. Such is the law that rules perception. It is not a law that knowledge understands, for freedom is a part of knowledge. Can I just stop there for a second? Yep. Um, again, just to explain what knowledge is for those who don't know sure. what it's talking about, right? He said, it says here, it is not a law that knowledge understands, for freedom is a part of knowledge. Uh, God's knowledge is changeless and eternal and knows no condemnation, no sin, no separation. That's, he's referring to God's knowledge, right? That's right. God's law. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Knowledge is not aware of this thought of separation. It knows no bodies. It knows not space and time and separation and all the things we've added on top of that. This is God's knowledge. This is what is. Okay. So it doesn't know the gap, right? Right. right. So if we see a brother, we condemn our brother. We're placing ourselves here. This is condemnation. This is the thought of limitation and sin and suffering and aging and sickness and disease and death. This is the only place those things seem to occur. Thank God it's not true. But he says, condemn and you are made prisoner. Forgive and you are freed. Such is the law that rules perception, right? Okay, moving back down to where I was. To condemn is thus impossible in truth. What seems to be its influence and its effects have not occurred at all. Again, the gap. Yet must we deal with them a while as if they had. Illusion makes illusion, except one. Forgiveness is illusion that is answer to the rest. Forgiveness sweeps all other dreams away. And though it is itself a dream, it breeds no others. All illusions save this one must multiply a thousandfold. But this forgiveness is where illusions end forgiveness is the end of dreams because it is a dream of waking it is not itself the truth yet does it point to where the truth must be and give direction with the certainty of god himself it is a dream in which the son of god awakens to his self and to his father knowing they are one Forgiveness is the only road <clears throat> that leads out of disaster, past all suffering, and finally away from death. How could there be another way when this one is the plan of God himself? And why should you oppose it, quarrel with it, seek to find a thousand ways in which it must be wrong, a thousand other ways? possibilities. There's the I know mind thinking that it's going to fix better, bring some light of truth or real love into the gap. There's one answer to the gap. 
And that is that this is not true. And I'm going to forgive myself for thinking that it was forgiving this thought of separation and allowing the truth to be true right where we are. Is it not wiser to be glad you hold the answer to your problems in your hand? Is it not more intelligent to thank the one who gives salvation and accept his gift with gratitude? And is it not a kindness to yourself to hear his voice and learn the simple lessons he would teach instead of trying to dismiss his words and substitute your own in place of his? His words will work. His words will save. His words contain all hope, all blessing, and all joy that ever can be found upon this earth. His words are born in God and come to you with heaven's love upon them. Those who hear his words have heard the song of heaven for these are the words in which all merge as one at last. And as this one will fade away, the word of God will come to take its place for it will be remembered then and loved. This world has many seeming separate haunts where mercy has no meaning and attack appears as justified, yet all are one, a place where death is offered to God's son and to his father. That's the gap, the entire whole, the, found, the founding thought of the entire gap of separation is the idea of the opposite of life, death. Remember, the, the form of the gap is that tombstone. So and this, the Holy Spirit, you know, does the Holy, does God, the Holy Spirit, and the Son of God, that's the Christ, we are, accept mm -hmm. that gap and what's in the gap? No. No. They're the answer to that, to the thought that that gap could exist. So he's describing the gap as a place where death is offered to God's son and to his father. You may think they have accepted, but if you will look again upon the place where you behold their blood, you will perceive a miracle instead. That's the result of looking right onto something and forgiving it, accepting atonement, looking with Holy Spirit and letting the light of truth show you what's there instead. That's but you have to be willing yes. to look past appearances. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is where I think the ego balks the most. Mm -hmm. Because it says, bullshit. Mm -hmm. My five physical senses are reporting that this devastation is occurring right there, right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it takes great discipline, vigilance. Mm -hmm. And it takes an, a, an honest recognition that you don't want this anymore. I mean, we first have to come to the place where we think we know that there's nothing in the gap that's going to bring us anything of value. That's why the prodigal son hits the wall, then turns around. It's like when we have maxed out on the gap and trying and, uh, you know, scraping together and achieving and finding, I still feel the same even though I've done everything that the world says is going to pay off. It never does. And so when we hit that wall, what a, what a beautiful place to be in. It feels like death, but it's absolutely the best because now with conviction, you can say, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something else. Part of you is knocking the holy self that knows that there is something else here. Now how to find it. And that's where the Holy Spirit shows up and starts talking to us about A Course in Miracles and the power of forgiveness. <laughs> okay. How foolish to believe that they, God's Son and the Father, could die. How foolish to believe you can attack. How mad to think that you could be condemned. And that the Holy Son of God can die. 
the stillness of yourself remains unmoved, untouched by thoughts like these and unaware of any condemnation which could need forgiveness. Dreams of any kind are strange and alien to the truth. Yet what but truth could have a thought that builds a bridge to truth, which brings illusions to the other side? Wow, that's, this is a different, mm -hmm. different wording in this sentence in the edited version of the course. Oh. If I pay, can I read it? Please. And what but truth could have a thought which builds a bridge to it that brings illusions to the other side. Can you read yours, please? Yet what but truth could have a thought that builds a bridge to truth, which brings illusions to the other side. I like yours, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, what, what is, what's going to acknowledge truth and bring us to truth, but truth itself? Yeah. All right. So we have a choice, yes? Only one is real. Mm -hmm. Today, we practice letting, letting freedom come to make its home with you. The truth bestows these words upon your mind that you may find the key to light and let the darkness end. Only my condemnation injures me. Only my own forgiveness sets me free. Is, can we just stop here? It doesn't say this, but it means it. In these two statements, we have the one problem. There's only one problem, regardless of where we see it. Mm -hmm. in, in a relationship, uh, in our finances, blah, 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 right? Right. There's only one problem. And that one problem is only my condemnation injures me. Only that, wherever I see it. Yeah? And consequently, there's only one solution. Only my own forgiveness sets me free. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very, very simple. And because Jesus says in other places, your only problem is that the thought of separation, the idea of you think you're separate, and God's answer was inconceivable. It was not possible. They're the same. So only my condemnation. I condemn myself when I believe that I'm separate. I condemn myself when I believe that I am Corrine. I condemn myself when I accept this limiting body as my identity. Right? So, and I choose mythical me. If I still am hooked to think that there's something here in the in this dream of separation of value that will pay off. Okay. But when we finally recognize that it doesn't, the only thing that could ever hurt me or cause me to suffer, my mind to suffer, is when that mind actually believes or that it, that it's fallen asleep and has taken on this false identity where it cannot find its relationship in God. It's not experiencing home and, and the atonement. So the only way out, again, this is so beautiful. The only answer to the thought of separation is the forgiveness of that thought because it never did occur. So we have one option out, and that is the recognition that illusions are illusions are illusions. There's no, no truth in it. It has never occurred. And the only way out from dreaming is to awaken. That's the forgiveness and accepting the atonement. So it's all up to us. So, sis, I'm inspired to bring this down to um, yeah. childlike simplicity. Okay. I like that. All right. So, if I am triggered by somebody else or by the body, pain, sickness, whatever, lack, yeah. et cetera, In that moment, I obviously believe I'm separate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah. Okay. So the belief that I am separate from God and my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. is what spawns 
what I'm seeing as problems. The body's sick, looks like it's going to die. You know, I'm bankrupt, blah, 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 blah. Right. Right. Lack, conflict, aging, all of it. All right. So that's, that's mm -hmm. what I see here. And I see that, you know, that this person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have conflict with this person here. Mm -hmm. This has abused me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, but when I forgive, I'm forgiving the illusion that I'm separate. And because I'm forgiving the illusion that I'm separate, I'm closing the gap. That's right. So everything that I'm seeing here that doesn't exist mm -hmm. only comes from my perception of being separate disappears. Yes. That's it. So you're healing the cause and not picking at effects. So you couldn't see any of that if you hadn't first believed that you were a body or separate. Mm -hmm. Right. Backing up to the first lie of separation. That's, that's healing the cause. Thanks. That's yeah. Everything in the gap goes when we are willing to forgive. So any worries we have, mm -hmm. any concerns we have about the future, our finances, mm -hmm. our safety, our yeah. security, all of those all come in here. And this doesn't, this doesn't exist. Right. This is the filter mm -hmm. that the ego sees through. Right. Just yeah. wanted to make that very, very clear. I think that's, you know, Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added to you. It's like, stop worrying about what's in the gap. Seek God, seek your understanding of your relationship to God and to your brother as one. That's closing the gap. And then, you know, everything that was within the gap um, is handled and taken care for us, harmonized, corrected, abundance, health, holy relationship, etc. cetera. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So only my condemn, my condemnation injures me. Only my forgiveness sets me free. Do not forget today that there can be no form of suffering that fails to hide an unforgiving thought, nor can there be a form of pain. Forgiveness cannot heal. So every problem in the gap is a form of it's unforgiveness in the mind. And that's that thought of separation. Yeah. And the answer is always forgiveness. Okay. So we don't need to <laughs> go ahead. So we don't need to solve the problem. No. The imaginary problem mm -hmm. in the gap. No, please don't. <laughs> Yeah, because who's going to be the one doing it? Well, as we say in Australia, otherwise we'll bugger it up. Bugger it up. That's a lovely way of saying how we would, Yankees would say here in the U.S. <laughs> and I will not repeat that. <laughs> okay. Paragraph 10 in the COA version. Accept, the, accept accept the one illusion which proclaims there is no condemnation in God's son, forgiveness, and heaven is remembered instantly, the world forgotten, and its weird beliefs forgotten with it, as the face of Christ appears unveiled at last in this one dream. This is the gift the Holy Spirit holds for you from God your Father. Let today be celebrated both on earth and in your holy home as well. Be kind to both as you forgive the trespasses you thought them guilty of and see your innocence shining upon you from the face of Christ. That's our brother. That's it. Now is there silence all around the world. Now is there stillness where before there was a frantic rush of thoughts that made no sense. Now is there tranquil light across the face of earth made quiet in a dreamless sleep. 
and now the word of God alone remains upon it. Only that can be perceived an instant longer. Then are symbols done, and everything you ever thought you made completely vanished from the mind which God forever knows to be his only son. There is no condemnation in him. He is perfect in his holiness. He needs no thoughts of mercy. Who could give him gifts when everything is his? And who could dream of offering forgiveness to the son of sinlessness itself, so like to him whose son he is, that to behold the son is to perceive no more and only know the father. In this vision of the son, so brief that not an instant stands between this single sight and timelessness itself, you see the vision of yourself and then you disappear forever into God. He's, oh, sorry, sis. Go ahead, sis. You disappear forever into God. Mm -hmm. Can you um, open the gap diagram, please? Mm -hmm. He's speaking of that you, the one that's in the gap, the one that believes it was born, the one that suffers that has conflict in their relationships and eventually dies, that one disappears, right? Yes. And our holy self is remembered in God. It never left. That's right. We're just remembering what is. <sighs> Thank you. Thanks, sis. Final paragraph. Today we come still nearer to the end of everything that yet would stand between this vision and our sight. And we are glad that we have come this far and recognize that he who brought us here will not forsake us now, for he would give to us the gift that God has given us through him today. Now, is it time for your deliverance? The time has come. The time has come today. Um, yeah, I, I, I can what I is, mm -hmm. I think this lesson um only my condemnation injures me uh really to be able to get the lesson like to really make it land within so it's not just an intellectual concept mm -hmm. it's important that we again um make an effort to reach the felt state that opens us to really allow this to drop in holographically. Yeah. All right. And uh, one thing that came to me this morning, if I can find it here, is this is a mantra that Jesus gave me, a few, I don't know, a few years ago. It's like a mantra. I used it for quite some time and it really helped me. Perfect. And what it did is it just brought me, my mind, into unity with in dropping my resistance to this lesson in dropping my resistance to distraction dropping my resistance uh, to fearlessness and dropping my resistance to truly accepting and receiving that incorruptible innocence that I am, it's in that state 
and he only needs one second mm -hmm. of linear time to blast through mm -hmm. <laughs> in the whole of the instant to give me the gift, the gift that he is attempting to give to us, right? Yes. So this is this is to help to undo the concept of condemnation because all condemnation is self-condemnation. Mm -hmm. As Jesus says in the course, all attack, mm -hmm. wherever we see it, wherever we believe it is, is always first self-attack. So it's self-betrayal. Mm -hmm. It's self-abandonment. That's what condemnation is. Yeah. So as we feel into our holiness, which is our innocence, as we really feel into that and receive it, condemnation falls away. Forgiveness occurs, the atonement occurs, and it's done. So let me just share that with you now. It's not long. Yeah. Sure, thank you. I call it the innocence mantra. My changeless and incorruptible innocence cannot be threatened. I am the incorruptible innocence of God and nothing but the incorruptible innocence of God. My innocence has never left me. I reunite in God's love as I choose to welcome my guiltlessness. I close the gap between God and myself as I willingly accept and receive my guiltlessness. All the power of God is restored to me as I joyous, joyously accept my incorruptible innocence. My innocence is not earned. It is my eternal and immutable being. The deeper I accept this, sorry, the deeper I accept this unchangeable truth, the closer I feel to God. My uninterrupted innocence is changeless. Anything that appears to threaten my innocence does not exist. I'm going to say that again. Anything that appears to threaten my innocence does not exist. I welcome my incorruptible innocence to flood my heart and my mind with its light. Love and innocence are one, and I am that one. Amen. Amen. Did you happen to include, I don't remember reading that in a blog, but did you ever place that in a blog? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Maybe we could um, make it just a document and put that at the top. I would, I feel like people would like to be able to print that out and come back to it. Very good point. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just write a sticky note. <laughs> you don't have one handy, do you? Mm. I have, there's one packet and there are about eight others here as well thank you sis i haven't healed yeah. my addiction sticky notes yet it's okay I need prayers. it'll fall away when it's ready to <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's a wonderful beautiful absolute prayer thank you thank you thank you and yeah. 
I guess I was supposed to remind you of something. I got a couple of blogs that we could put down here also in support of this. Thank you. Um, two of them. They're going to be right there at the top in the list of resources under the description or show more box. We all know how this goes by now, I'm sure. The uh, two blogs, one of them is called Healing a Separate Sense of Self. That's really a key blog. They're all really key, but <laughs> we don't want to miss that one. Healing a Separate Sense of Self and The Light That Pierces the Darkness. So both of those are additional reading options for you if you feel to take a deeper dive around this. Well, actually, they're the links to the audio recording. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And you can scroll up to read it if you want to, but most people don't want to read. I'm the opposite. I love to read it because I find if I'm listening to the audio, I get distracted or uh, ego tries to have me think about do doing something while I'm listening to it. And I don't take it in. But if I sit there and I read it, um, I'm able to take it in. So I like the reading. Sis likes the audio. But, you know, it's beautiful because every blog, there's options to for a printout um, to read it right there off the tablet or laptop or your computer or to listen to it. So have at it anyway, what, whatever floats your boat. That's great. I'm not an audio person, just to let you know. Oh, yeah. how do you, how do you like to receive? 2021 years. <laughs> and you still don't know that I'm not audio. Okay. <laughs> You're always pushing the audio, but I think, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm the oddball then. Maybe everybody else likes the audio. It doesn't matter. What we want to do is make sure that it's super easy, very functional and practical uh, for you guys. So however, however you want to do it, you know, I'm just looking at this lesson in its totality and the simplicity of Jesus reminds us we're always going within and we're deciding right then and there what we think we are. And if you're the mythical me, then separation is true for you. And you're carrying around the belief that you're sinful and all your projections are going to mirror and feedback, report back to you that you're right about yourself. Or you go within and you know, I am the holy child of God. I'm one with my creator. I am as God created me. And from that place, your projections project a happy dream that reinforces again what you understand about yourself. So the world's not condemning you. Your brothers and sisters aren't condemning you. Your bank account, your job, uh, your relationships are not condemning you. It was that first choice to think of yourself as you could never be. That's all there is to condemnation. All there seems to be in this dream of condemnation. And there's one solution. Let's not try and go into the realm of illusions and fight illusions. Let's just forgive what has never been. That's the only, that was God's answer. That's his plan for our salvation. It's the only one that will work. So let's streamline, just recognize if it's not in alignment with our absolute incorruptible innocence, as Nook just shared, it isn't true. Yeah, I love that summary. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I tend to th make things a lot more difficult, but just turning within, what are you? And the answer to that question will give you your whole experience. Okay. Thanks, sis. Thank you. Thanks for letting me read. And um, thank you for the, the, the prayer. And we'll make sure you guys have access to that prayer as well. Um, am I missing anything before we sign off? I will. I'll ask, um, uh, I'll ask Mwanga to actually Put the prayer, the innocence okay. prayer, in the top there with the recommended blogs. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Thank sis. For the Thank gift. You for reading so beautifully too. Ah, uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, sis. Okay, we'll see you next time. We love you. We're Bye. grateful to you. Bye, family. Bye.